हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू द न्यू वीडियो दैट इज ऑन द चैप्टर दैट इज ऑन द ट्रांसमिशन ऑफ द टू व्हीलर्स राइट दट इन द केस ऑफ द ट्रांसमिशन वी आर लर्निंग अबाउट द ट्रांसमिशन सिस्टम व्हिच इज रिक्वायर्ड टू ट्रांसमिट द पावर ऑफ द इंजन टू अवर व्हील्स राइट द फर्स्ट कंपोनेंट दैट वी सो द क्लच दैट इज बीन रिक्वायर्ड टू एंगेज एंड डिसएंगेज द इंजन पावर फ्रॉम द आउटपुट शाफ्ट so we also saw about the types of clutch which are generally used in case of the two wheelers now we will see about the gear box which is being required in the case of the two and three wheelers before we learn about the gear box there is a one concept that needs to be learned that is an clutch release mechanism how the clutch is released which means how the clutch is engaged and disengaged in case of the two wheelers so generally the clutch release mechanism in the case of the two wheelers will be operated by our hand as given in the motorcycles when we operate our hand lever the clutch will be operated but at the clutch side what type of components are given so first one is the screw type release mechanism in that one screw is provided that release outer and release inner you can see in this figure in the case of the release inner one screw is provided when we operate the clutch lever so with that the clutch cable will be connected when we operate the clutch lever or when we push the clutch lever that cable will be tensioned that tensioned cable will push out the screw and that screw whenever we are pushing the screw out the pressure plate will be compressed with the help of the diaphragm spring you can see the multi plate clutch is given in this example as well because it is widely used in case of the two wheeler vehicles the second type that is also used in case of the release mechanism is the cam type release mechanism so in that the cam will be provided in place of a screw the shape of the cam will be given such as that whenever we push the clutch lever the outer end of the cam will be in contact with the shaft which is connected with our clutch shaft so whenever we push the clutch lever with the help of the tension in the clutch cable the cam will rotate and that rotated cam will push the uh, diaphragm spring and with that the pressure plate will be disengaged and at that time we can change the gears with the disengaged position of the clutch so these are the two basic types of the clutch release mechanism which are generally used in case of the two wheeler vehicles next we will see about the gear box right in case of the gear box there are mainly two types that is generally used in case of the two two wheeler engine the first one is the sequential gear box and the second one is the constant mesh gear box either you can see that both the gear box are same the mechanism which are required to operate this vehicle is only different right in the case of the sequential gear box the gears will only be shifted in a sequence which means whenever we want to go in the first gear the first it will be in the neutral so when we want to change the gear from the first to second the middle gear will be neutral so always when we want to change the gear in middle it will be neutral after that second to third third neutral fourth this is how the gear will be shifted in case of the sequential gear box in the case of the constant gear box you can directly shift the gear from the first to the second gear let's see one example of the sequential gear box in the video you can see the sequential gear box is provided in the motorcycle to operate the gear the gear lever is provided at the foot side right you can see the gear box is given in this arrangement in this gear box the shifter shaft is connected with the shifting mechanism in the case of the shifting mechanism you can see that two half gears or the teeth of the gears is connected when we operate the clutch lever the wheel or the star wheel that you can see right now will rotate when that star wheel rotates so during that inner part the gear is connected when the topmost part of the star is connected the 
न्यूट्रल पोजिशन इज कनेक्टेड द शिफ्टिंग ड्रम्स एंड शिफ्टिंग चैनल्स आर कनेक्टेड विथ अवर स्टार व्हील्स एंड दैट शिफ्टिंग फॉर्क विल बी कनेक्टेड अवर गियर शिफ्टिंग मेकेनिजम दिस आर द डॉक क्लचिस दैट विल बी इंसर्टेड इन बिटवीन द गियर्स दैट इज बीन गिवन इन अवर गियर बॉक्स राइट यू कैन सी वेन द स्टार विल रोटेट्स द डॉक क्लचिस स्लाइड इन द ओरिजेंटल डायरेक्शन so when it slides it will be in contact with the gear that we need to shift in the sequential gear box that we are learning in the case of the gear box there are two shaft that is input shaft and the output shaft from the input shaft the engine is giving the power this is the gears which is been connected on the output outer shaft with the splines so whenever we rotate our gears then the engine will uh, sorry the shaft will rotate right the red color parts you can see are the dock clutches which is been connected in between the two gears when the dock clutch is engaged with our gear only after that the shaft will rotate right you can see right now the gear it rotating but shaft is not rotating the shaft will only rotate when the dock clutch is being engaged with our gear that needs to be rotated that gears will be selected based on the first second third fourth and fifth gear in this the five speed gear box has been given with the help of the dock clutch you can see when the dock clutch is engaged with our blue color gear that after that moment the speed of the blue gear will be transmitted to our shaft right you can see the 1 2 3 4 and fifth gear that has been shown in the figure right now so when we want to change the gears we need to change the position of the dock clutch which will be changed by the help of the gear shifting mechanism that we saw earlier and in this this will be a neutral position right when any dock clutch is not connected it is neutral position this position right now you can see is the first gear in which the gear number 1 which you can see is connected with our dock clutch so the first gear will be operated when the dock clutch is connected with our gear number 1 when we want to engage the gear number 2 that dock clutch will be released and the gear number 2 dock clutch will be connected with gear number 2 this is how the second gear will work in the case of the third gear same again the dock clutch will be connected with our gear number 3 and the torque will be transmitted in case of the fourth gear you can see the dock clutch of the below shaft will be connected in case of the fifth gear the dock clutch will be connected in the left side so this is how we can achieve the five gear ratio in this position no dock clutch was attached so neutral position we can say after that we can say that whenever we are changing the gear there will be a some time in which the vehicle will be in the neutral position and after that we can connect our gear at which we want to get the output right let's see how the star wheel works so in case of the star wheel we have given the five points which gives us the 1 2 3 4 and 5 readings in which valley gives us the bottom part and ridge gives us the top part so when our star wheel is connected with the valley part the gear will be operated when it is connected with the ridge part which is the topper part the gear will be in the neutral position so you can see whenever we are shifting the gears the neutral will always come in between the gear shifting right so this is how the gear box works in a sequential manner which means whenever we want to change the gear it will only go in a flow which is one neutral two neutral three neutral four right this is how the gear works in case of the sequential gear box if you want to downgrade the gears then also it will come four and three and two and one right this is how the gear box will work in case of the sequential gear box the second type which is almost the same as the sequential gear box is the constant mesh gear box but in case of the constant mesh gear box the operating mechanism will be little bit different to operate the gears or to connect the gears with our shaft in the previous we saw the dock clutch was used 
in case of the constant mesh we can either use lock clutch or in the figure you can see the arrangement that is used is the ball bearing arrangement or the other arrangement which we can use that can connect our gears with our shaft in this the gears can be shifted in any order which means we don't need to go to the neutral whenever we are shifting the gears from the first directly we can go to the second generally in the normal bikes we use a method that is a sequential gearbox method right in the figure you can see in the case of the constant meshing of the gears the gears will be always in the mesh when the gear will be engaged that will be done by the gear shifting mechanism which will engage the gear with our shaft whenever we operate it right in the previous we saw that when lock clutch connects with it the gear gets connected but until then the gears rotate but it rotates freely when the shaft will rotate when our operating mechanism will engage that shaft with our output shaft right so this is how the gearbox works in the case of the four wheelers right in the previous semester in the subject bs we saw about the other two types that is sliding mesh gearbox and synchro mesh gearbox as well so these two types are not generally used in the two wheelers because we generally use sequential gearbox so mostly in the four wheelers we use an synchro mesh gearbox in which the synchronizing unit is used the advantage of the synchronizing unit is that the timing between the gear changing is very lesser which means when one gear is disengaging the second gear is engaging at the same time right so changing time will be reduced in case of the sequential gearbox as you can see that first from that neutral will come and after that second gear will come so timing between the changing gear is more in the case of the sequential gearbox so in this video we saw about the gearbox that are used in the case of the two wheelers in the next video we will see about the automatic transmission gearbox until then thank you so much